Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And now I know I said the last time I did this on Tuesday is I might have a day off on Wednesday if there was no news, where there ended up being a bit of news that I could have spoken about, but I'll be honest with you, the night shifts proper caught up with me. I don't know if I mentioned I was on nights, by the way. Um, I saw a couple of comments saying, you're on nights? You not mentioned it? I'm like, yeah, I did mention it a bit, didn't I? Um, but yeah, they ended up just catching up with me, and I was absolutely goosed. So I just thought, I'll, I'll just leave it for now. But I've, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about everything in this show so you're all caught up on everything that we may have missed yesterday. And the first one, unfortunately, isn't great news. Fabrizio Romano has said that uh, Maxime Esteve is being monitored by Premier League clubs. He goes on to say that Wolves have asked about the um, availability, I think it was, he said. I'll just quickly get the, the tweet up. Um, in Fabrizio's tweet, he says, Max Team Esteve could be one to watch in August as, a pre as Premier League clubs are exploring a move for the Burnley centre-back. Wolves, as Wolves have asked for conditions. The race is now open. I will be devastated if we lose Maxime Esteve. He's just joined us, obviously, on a permanent basis. I know he came in in January on loan with the obligation... But he's come in and he's done very, very well. I genuinely believe he is one of, if not the best centre-back at the club. I know a lot of people would argue Bayer, but obviously I'm, I'm bringing into the fact that Bayer just never seems to be available at the minute as well. And I know <laughs> Dar Roche splits opinion, but I quite like him. I thought he got better as the season went on and I think he will do well in the Championship. But if we could have Maxime Esteve and Jordan Bayer or Maxime Esteve and Dara, or even Dara and Jordan Bayer at, at centre-back, if Esteve does leave, then I do think we'll be fine. But I feel like Esteve, in my opinion, I don't know, there's just something about He's really strong in the air. I really like him. He, he does sometimes kind of like, you know, speak to fans and stuff on, on socials. Like you'll see him responding to people's comments and stuff every now and then. He just seems like a very likeable young man. I will be gutted if we, if, if we leave... Uh, sorry, if if we sell Maxime Esteve. Um, however, just for full transparency, uh, I know Fabrizio Romano has said uh, what I've just told you, but he tweeted pretty much the exact same thing about two months ago. He said, Maxime Esteve attracted interest for the summer transfer window after Burnley relegation. The France under-23 centre-back in shortlist of two Premier League clubs after playing all 16 consecutive games consecutive games sorry I put my teeth back in since he joined the club in February so nothing's happened in that gap really I know a lot's been going on we've had the Euros and stuff and and things like that so things may start snowballing a little bit now but just going back to his original tweet uh, when I say original the one he's tweeted today um, about it being one to watch in August it doesn't sound to me like anything's imminent and if things may start moving if certain you know, um, things align together, then who knows? We, we may unfortunately see the back of Maxime Esteve, but I would be very disappointed if we leave it. And I'm not expecting it to happen, na like I said, imminently, if it does happen. Um, but it sounds to me um, from this tweet that Fabrizio has said that a few clubs are interested in Maxime Esteve. And I've said it before already, but I'll say it again, I'll be devastated if we lose him. Moving on to some... I'm I think this is positive news, but when I tweeted it, a lot of people were reacting negatively due to something within it. But Burnley are looking at Bristol City striker Tommy Conway. However, now we tweeted something yesterday. But this is where I'm referring to about the news that I didn't manage to get to talk to you all about. Uh, this was on July the 31st, uh, and this is what we said then. We got this from BirminghamWorld.uk. Burnley are said to have made a tentative inquiry about Bristol City striker Tommy Conway, but their valuation of Conway does not align with how Bristol City value the striker. Since then, there has been a development, and Bristol City Live, who are the sports Twitter page from the Bristol Post, so you know the local newspaper down there, said Bristol Live understands that Burnley have joined Middlesbrough in the race to sign Tommy Conway, but there is an intriguing twist to the Claret's proposal. Ooh. Uh, and they put in the picture um, a picture of um, Scott Twine and a picture of um, McNally as well. Uh, and it goes on to say, 
in the article on the Bristol Post website. Bristol City are in talks with Burnley or over an ambitious swap deal that could see Tommy Conway move to Turf Moor and Scott Twine and Luke McNally head in the opposite direction. Bristol Live understands. Now, obviously, Twine's already spent some time on loan at Bristol. There's been a few tweets and stuff about him, about Bristol City wanting him back and stuff. So it sounds to me what's happened here is we've made this tentative inquiry that Birmingham World mentioned just yesterday and since then conversations have continued they've made their interest in twine more known and said maybe we could do something where twine heads the opposite way and then they've obviously mentioned mcnally as well but it's interesting about middlesbrough being interested as well because the bristol post article goes on to say middlesbrough submitted a bid for conway last weekend worth five million pounds but the total package is heavily incentivized based on various clauses being met bristol city would prefer a more uh, sorry a more guaranteed sum up front which could then fuel further additions in the final month of the window so sounded like they wanted more money or more money up front, as the article said, from Middlesbrough, so they could bring in replacements, but we're just offering them the replacements that they want straight away. So, interesting. I'm not sure I'd want to lose Twine. I've said it before, I think he can play a part for us. Maybe not starting week in, week out, but I think he can play a part for us. But if the club see Tommy Conway as somebody who will start week in, week out for us, then they probably see that as a, a decent option for the club, bringing him in and shipping Twine off. And, and obviously Twine is from that sort of area as well. So he may or may not want that move. But I think this one might start moving along whichever way over the next few days because it sounds like the two clubs are in discussion. So we'll have to see what happens with that one. There's also some potential news of another outgoing. Now, don't worry, it's not one that anybody will lose any sleep over. But according to Belgian journalist Bob Fassen, now, Bob only has just under 3,000 followers on Twitter, but Bob is a good, good journalist. He works for HLN, which is one of the major newspapers over there, and he's actually been on Turfcast before. When we signed Sam, Samuel Bastien, I don't know if, if you remember, but I, I got him on the show and spoke to him about Samuel. He's a really good lad, is Bob. I like Bob. He's, he's always got time to, for doing stuff like that, and, and, he, and he's a good lad, and he's a very, very good journalist. Um, but he's saying that there are several clubs interested in Burnley's Mike Trezor. Now, I, like I said, nobody's going to be losing any sleep over Mike Trezor being out of the club personally after him not coming back to training, which I've not spoken to anyone about that recently, but I'm just going off all the stuff that the club are putting up. I still don't think he's turned up, um, but again, not everything you see on Turfcast is true. That may or may not be true. Um, but Bob's tweet says there is quite a bit of interest in Mike Trezor. Clubs from the Netherlands, France and Spain have Burnley's Red Devil on their shortlist. We know he's not going to play for us in the Championship. I think that's pretty obvious now. What I don't want here is another veg horse situation where we have him on our books for three, four years and we just can't get rid of him. Now, the reason why I mention that is because in Bob's article, and I won't put it on screen because it's in Dutch, but when I translated it using Google uh, yesterday, I think it was, um, it, it speaks about it most likely being a loan move, seeing him leave and, and, then, and then going from there and potentially coming back and then leaving again. And we don't want that. Let's just get it done now. This Vego thing has dragged on for so long. He's still on our books. And sometimes people... When I'm speaking to people about him who aren't Burnley fans, obviously, say, bloody hell, have you still got him? I'm like, yeah, tell me about it. I don't want another situation with Trezor. I do feel a little bit sorry for Trezor in, 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 because I know he's not come back to training, so he kind of loses all sympathy, to be fair. But I, I do feel company managed him hideously last season. He never got a run of games. Admittedly, when he did play, he looked poor. But he's clearly got the quality in there. You don't get the Belgian Super League Player of the Year or whatever it was for nothing. He's clearly got quality in there. And you, and you saw it in very, very few, admittedly, glimpses. But he's clearly a very good technical player. But my God, his attitude stinks. It absolutely reeks. So... Get him gone. Get him out of the club. We don't want somebody who doesn't want to be here. We don't want another Vego situation where it just drags on for years. If he doesn't want to play in England anymore, it never really felt like he wanted to come, to be fair. He stalled on the move for ages, didn't he? And then eventually came. And then I just don't think his heart's ever been here. I don't think he ever wanted to come. I don't think he's ever enjoyed any second of being here. 
Um, and I do have, like I said, slight sympathy for him in the fact that the company managed him atrociously last season. But horrendous attitude. And if he wants to leave, get him gone. Ideally not on a loan, just get him out of the club. Finally, just one more loose end to tie up because I missed the show on Wednesday. But according to an article in French newspaper L'Equipe, Burnley are chasing FC non-striker Apua, facing competition from Palermo and Young Boys. L'Equipe tends to be hit and miss. I think I've spoken about them before. It is the main newspaper in France, so they obviously have some credibility. Um, but every time I seem to see and a, a story from L'Equipe, um, if I'm pronouncing it right, probably not, it's probably something like L'Equipe, isn't it? I don't know. Um, but every time I see to see a story from there surrounding Burnley, I, I'm, has it ever come off? I don't know. Um, but they obviously have some credibility for that. So again, Burnley are chasing FC Nantes striker Apua. I don't know if he's just like a, a one name sort of thing. I'll just quickly give him a search. Um, but... Uh, face interest. Uh, it's called Streda Apua. There you go, according to this. Um, and like I said, currently playing at FC Nantes in League 1. And he is uh, he's French uh, with also Ghana citizenship. He's a left winger and can play on the right as well. So we'll see. I think we're obviously well stacked in that one. So it might just be a, a bit of agent talk from Liquip. I'm not sure. Um, but we'll see. That one was tweeted by us yesterday at 9.50 a.m. So you've probably seen it. If you don't follow us on Twitter, I know some of you watch these shows because you're not on social media and you can't keep up to date. So it's just my way of keeping you up to date. But yeah, uh, Liquip said that yesterday. There's been nothing on that since. But um, we'll keep an eye on it. And if anything develops, we will let you know, of course. But yeah, that's it from me. Like I said, apologies for missing yesterday's show. The nights are done now, thankfully. I just need to get my body clock back to normal which I'm sure I will do tonight and we'll be back with the show on Friday evening as usual so I can include all the stuff from Friday and then fingers crossed fingers crossed we can do something with the lads again this weekend or early next week because of course the football season is not long away now I think it's one week tomorrow that EFL gets underway obviously not for us we, we don't play until Monday so we'll try and get something done this week with the lads where we talk about the season ahead. But if we can't manage that because for whatever reason, say if none of the dates, the times or the dates mix uh, connect with all the lads and we can't just sit down at the same time, then we will 100% be going back to normal next week with the pre-game show and then hopefully a full-time show and then we'll start churning them kind of podcasts out again. Which, if you are listening to this on the Claret's Daily News podcast feed, you will be able to find on the Turfcast podcast feed. So if you haven't subscribed to the Turfcast podcast feed, but you subscribe to the Claret's Daily News podcast feed, subscribe to the other one. Just subscribe to both, no matter what you're listening or watching this on. Just subscribe to everything we do. But yeah, let me know as usual what you think in the comments below. Esteve, I would genuinely be gutted if he leaves. I think it makes us weaker. I think it makes our starting 11 weaker. I think he's pretty much a guaranteed starter. You could argue, like I said earlier, potentially O'Shea and, uh, and Jordan Bayer, but with Jordan Bayer's injury record... This would leave us short if if he picks up another injury and we are going with Bayer as number one choice. But I, I would suspect that with how well he played last season, Esteve, that we'd probably go with Esteve and Dar Rocher as our number one choice. And as far as I'm aware, I mean, the club have, have put pictures of him in training this week, so I'm not sure how Jordan's doing with his injury. But obviously, he has had a bad injury record last season, not playing we're playing a very small part of last season. So please keep hold of Esteve. Unless, of course, a ridiculous big comes in. I get it. Everybody's got a price. But it, I will be sad to see Maxime leave. Um, yeah, Tommy Conway. What are you thinking about this Scott Twine thing then? Um, being in a swap deal for Tommy Conway. It's interesting. I kind of understand it, but I don't want to see Twine leave. So it's going to be interesting to see how that one develops. And yeah, several clubs interested in Mike Trezor. I think most of you will agree with me when I say... Get that one done. Get him out of the club. If he doesn't want to be here, then fine. Let's just get it done. But thanks everyone for watching and thanks everyone for listening. And I'll be back tomorrow evening.